Justin Morgan. I am one of the instructors here at Sinclair College with the Automotive Program. Alright, so our specification for this vehicle is a 2015 Jeep Wrangler with a 3.6 liter V6 and it actually has a 160 amp alternator. It's always important to make sure that you have the correct engine and the options because vehicles are going to differ. So you could have something as low as maybe 120, as high as 220 amp alternator on a variety of newer vehicles and they're likely to get higher from here on out with more electrical accessories and loads on the vehicle. So we're going to get ready to use that 160 amp alternator. We're going to have to start the vehicle and run it. So we're going to start it up and run it. We're going to make sure that we have our exhaust hose on and then we're going to connect our lead. So let's go ahead and start with that now. So what we're going to do is we have three different leads that we're going to use for connections. It's pretty straightforward. The black lead is going to go to our negative our ground. Our red lead is going to go to our positive post. The last connection is going to be what they call an inductive amp clamp. And so on this one, we're going to actually measure the current coming out of what we call the B positive terminal of the alternator. So that comes from the alternator back into the battery. And so this is the one that's actually going to be measuring our amperage, and we talked about 160 amp output. This is actually going to be using as a voltmeter. So not only does it power up the machine, but it also gives us our voltage connection for what the vehicle is going to have. So we're going to show you where to connect these. Ideally, I'd like to connect these at the positive or negative post rather than the jump start post of the vehicle. But for right now, I think we should be able to access that. And then we'll show you this connection. One thing to note is there is an arrow on these. And the arrow is going to be in the direction of current flow. And on most vehicles, this is always going to be from alternator to the battery. So the arrow is going to point away from the alternator, actually in the direction of the current flow going back into the battery. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our leads here, as I mentioned previously. We're going to connect the negative to the ground post, so this is noted there. And we're going to take our positive lead and get these untangled a little bit. And sometimes we've got to pull the machine a little bit closer, and we just want to get a nice connection. And so we're going to go over here, get this on hopefully that post. And if not, we may have to reposition. It looks like we're going to have to reposition, get another bite on the post there. And then the last one, is going to be our amp clamp and if you're paying close attention and you can see there's an arrow there it's kind of hard to see that's going to point in this direction so current is coming out the alternator going back into our our battery to charge it and to provide the current for the electrical load so if you have your heated seat your power windows your blower motor your radio operating that's going to provide that current so we're going to clip that around make sure that the clamp actually goes this way if we're using our older um AVR tester or VAT40 tester as they called it by Sun Corporation, it'd be the same connections. Now we're ready to start the vehicle and we'll show you what to do on the machine. So as you have seen, I started the vehicle. Our charging system voltage went from about 12.6 with the engine off to about 14 and a half with the engine running. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this knob right here and load this down so this actually comes from 14.3 down to about 12 volts. By doing this, what this load knob does is it simulates that we're turning on electrical accessories. The charging system is on demand, so more loads we put on this vehicle, the more output the alternator is going to have. So as you're going to turn this on, you're going to see that we have a little bit of amperage coming through that B positive terminal. At any point, if we get to 160 or higher, we need to stop the test and it's met its, its uh, specification. The reason you want to stop is because if you go over that amount, you run the risk of blowing an internal fusible link or fuse in line in the B positive terminal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this. The other thing I'm going to do is have an assistant raise the RPM. And by bringing the RPM up, that simulates a cruise condition as if you're driving the vehicle 50 to 70 miles an hour down the interstate. It also allows the alternator to put out a little bit more. So let's get ready to do that. I'll have my assistant raise the RPM. All right, so we're bringing the RPM up. We're going to take this down to about 12 volts. We're going to see if that goes over 160 amps. And right there, we'll do it another time. That's good. That was perfect. Did you capture that? Okay. So. That's perfect. Thank you much, Mr. Smith. So just to recap, what I did and uh, is I had the assistant bring the RPM up between 2,000 and 3,000 RPM. That brings up the alternator speed. As I took this load, that puts a demand on the electrical system. It causes our voltage to drop on the electrical system. And what will happen 
is you're going to see that this number will start to slightly increase as we put more of a load on it. Now, when I was doing this test before I ever got to 12 volts, it got up to 170, 180 amps. And what that tells me is that this alternator, at least in this given circumstance, is working correctly. We can always have an intermittent where sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but right now this alternator is working well. So this is a charging system output test with an AVR, which is a newer style of tool. It's a digital tool compared to our analog tests. All right, so just to recap what we just did there is we did our charging system output test. That's with a uh, snap-on AVR. There's several different tools that are very similar on the market. The older one that a lot of shops used to use was gonna be a uh, VAT40 made by Sun Corporation. Still something you'll see on ASC tests. And so just wanted to kind of go through and, and remember, you're gonna connect your red lead to the positive post, your black lead to the negative post, your amp clamp goes around your B positive terminal going back to the battery. We're gonna start the engine. We're gonna run it up to 2000 RPM. And then we're gonna go ahead and take the load knob, take the voltage down to 12 volts, we're going to make sure that we exceed whatever our specification is and actually you can be within 10 percent so if it's a 100 amp alternator we're looking for 90 amps or higher to make sure that it meets specification so if you like this video if you would share it and go ahead and hit the like button and if you would get a chance comment on more technical videos that you'd like to see us produce in the future thanks so much